Okay, it's August the 21st. Uh, Bob has just returned, and uh, he's going to give me a few brief comments on the uh, four major uh, contacts that he made on this uh, trip. Uh, I know he's uh, pretty much fatigued and had much sleep, but uh, I think it, it'll be very useful for me if I can get just uh, uh, at least a preliminary report on uh, each of the four visits, and I'd like to uh, start with the uh, first contact, the one in uh, in England, mm -hmm. with Will Thorner. Okay. Shall I begin? Okay. I uh, compared the notes of the recent ideas I had with Will Thorner, and he agrees with the necessity of having step functions in the waves that he's using for his communication and that he's using traveling waves. Plus, he, I found out by interrogation, is using what we call an anisotropic semiconductor. It has properties that most engineers don't want to go near because the mathematics is too hard. They can't use them in mass production and release them to people who don't know what they're using. It would be something to be manufactured, used temporarily, and replaced. And this is exactly what he's doing. He turned over to me uh, about two inches worth of notes over his life's work. It's a summary of the schematics. He gave me samples of his anodes and cathodes and proceeded to demonstrate the equipment to me and I made some discoveries and shared new concepts with him when we experimented with his equipment. We set up his uh, detection device that has the uh, sensitive cell and he first uh, showed me how to fire it by remote control as we did send the system, the plasma system in oscillation. You remember how we were turning that on and off? Okay, we were doing this with a light on the panel and with his. After I had mastered knowing what I was doing and how sensitive the device was, he switched it so that the device would be focused or sensitive to a plant. And we swapped turns, impressions being sent to a plant, and then the plant responding and signaling to the transmitter. Now to make sure this was what was happening, I started firing impulses all over the room, even at the box, the sensor and everything. Nothing worked only when I contacted the plant. So he has a definite directional sensitivity. Then I tried to determine... If I may it. break in there, when, when, you, when you contacted the plant, what did you do to contact the plant? I created a, a holographic image, as it were, of the plant in myself, and I acknowledged it as an existence, as an entity, and I flashed that warm feeling, a love type compassion and awareness. To it mm -hmm. and try to congeal this energy onto it, if it were to be expressed. Now, form a ball for a ball, a cube for a cube, project it into it. Distinctly a thought process. That's a, right. A projection of thought. Yes, and emotion with it. Yes, Th thoughts and emotions, right. So then I had an opportunity for him to set up an airplane that had a sensitive cell sitting above the cockpit. It had a motor on it with a uh, propeller that could be spun for automatic feedback, like a biofeedback machine. Okay, so when you... This was a model airplane. Model airplane sitting on a pole. Mm -hmm. And when you properly concentrated to uh, start the machine, the, the propeller would begin to spin. And his point was, can you turn it on and off, both? And what I examined was the actual holographic model necessary. And I determined that in order to turn his airplane on, I needed to see and project the propeller spinning. I got practically 100% efficiency turning it on and off doing that, but if I tried just the airplane and seeing the airplane still, sometimes it wouldn't fire. And if I concentrated on the cell itself that was sensitive above the cockpit, it always turned the device off hmm. rather than on. So I said to him, it looks like we have a sensitivity in accordance to the volume and the mass of, the, of this object, and you can focus your energy into two different zones to get a yes-no effect in the same space, according to the shape. Uh, offhand, this, 
this uh, is really striking to me. Uh, do you know of anything in the literature that's uh, equal to this kind of, a, uh, of an experiment? What literature? Oh, well, in any literature you've come across uh, uh, here in the United no. States where... No, but I discussed these concepts in depth with Dr. Sinkowski, and I'll get into that when we yeah. get to him. Yeah. But mostly I was investigating my own theories as given to me by my guides and how to, to test them. So, at the end of the experiment, he played for me his tapes, his contacts, which involved using a radio as a transmitter to talk to fishermen. Uh, he also played some voices for me. He turned over the 20 cassettes to give to you. And he provided me dicyanine, which I asked for, which was the end of his supply. And was that the material that, uh, that Kilner used in his uh, yes. uh, so-called hour goggles? Exactly. Yeah. And we discussed the technique he used to see that energy flowing himself. So mm -hmm. I now have that, and I'll put a document together for that. Oh, good, okay. good, good. Uh, that, that might be very useful. I don't know, but it's yeah, yes. uh, very useful for Kage's work. Uh, yes, yeah, yes, I agree. In fact... When we get to Kaga, I'll, I'll yeah. go into that. Yeah. Everything was uniquely bound together, very strong, and there's a new uh, fire going on over there now. <laughs> I stirred up all the coals. <laughs> Got everybody's mind working overtime. That pretty well summarizes it, besides all the, you know, dinners and yeah. hellos. Well, uh, <clears throat> I gather you established a very cordial relationship with Will. Enough that he asked my wife to stay with him and, and his wife the whole time that uh, she was in England, but she expressed the desire to run around. Yeah. And so oh, you she, went down to, she went down to, uh, there to, to she went to, She went to there with me, yes. We, we, um, we got bumped out of our room in London. Oh. It was closed when we got there, and uh, we had to wait three hours to find an open room, and we could only have it for two days. So we canceled the second day and then went on down and got one in Brighton. I see, yeah. And then, of course... The first day I went alone, and they expre expressed an interest to see my wife. So as a couple, we all had yeah. some fun together. Right. Of course. So you stayed overnight in uh, his town down there, down down near there. In Brighton, yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Good. Very good. good. Lots of adventure. Physically, has he pretty well recovered from this uh, yes, accident I think so. he was in? I think so. He expressed a, a dissatisfaction in having to get rid of equipment. He yeah. now wishes he had some toys left over. But... He kind of also realizes he's to the point he needs someone else to pick up what he's been doing and work. Yeah. Yeah. Does he see you in that role? Yes. Yeah, good. And he also asked me to um, tell him exactly what Koenig is doing, and I have to check this out with you first. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can, I can say right now that uh, uh, I would certainly have no reason whatsoever for holding any information back on Koenig's work uh, if it can be of any use to Will's work. It would be because he's trying to determine if the um, energy transfers are phonon, photon, electromagnetic, or what. Did uh, Will indicate that he had any plans for any procedures, and uh, not procedures, any plans for a forward research program of his own? He asked me to give him a sense of direction. He wanted me to give him perspective, and I told him I would do so after this trip, but that I thought that the first thing that would be useful is for me to supply him the biological materials I'm detecting from my guys as being those possible cells. Yeah, good. Let him repeat his experiments. Good, good. Uh, then I get the feeling that we've got, uh, in every sense, we've got an absolutely sound contact with Will as a colleague in this, yes. in this research. No yeah. question. Fine, good. All right, uh, I just uh, want to break in about uh, Peggy. Uh, uh, I think we ought to check and see just what time her flight is due. And she was on schedule because uh, if she comes up to the end of the escalator there and nobody's there, she won't know what to do. Yeah, I'm kind of stuck trying to figure out. So, so we'll hold off here just a minute. Uh, is there uh, anything further on uh, Will that we should uh, talk about, the, your visit with Will Thorner? Only that he made it very clear he's a very practiced homeopath. Yeah, right. I think that's going to be helpful. Yeah. Yes, he uh, at one time had a very good practice. Uh, he told me quite a bit about that. Uh, uh, right. That, yeah, that came as a surprise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. All right. Let's uh, go over to uh, Koenig. Koenig. Okay. The uh, events at Koenig was um, dramatic, to say the least. We didn't get any voices because his uh, generator was in the mode of being installed into one box instead of having all of those little pieces. And uh, Herr Sankowski asked for my permission to supply him with copies of the prints for the M10, and I said, of course. But I am I'm convinced that Herr Koenig has his own plans, and he has his own goals, and he's going to build this box. He's right in the middle of the work. He won't change over. Mm -hmm. But the point was that his device has got the same kind of wave fronts as we we're talking about working with the square waves. Mm -hmm. It would not work with the sine waves. He said he had tried it and it had to be um, a special composition of the waves. So he turned on a system with the sine waves and repeated the experiments he had done with his square waves and a very interesting phenomenon occurred. I found that I was being excited physically, not in a way that I can express other than to know that the ultrasonics were passing through my body and I could tell the direction they were flowing and the beat frequency and the phase and I stunned him by being able to tell him which way he had adjusted the knobs without looking hmm. and out of maybe 20 trials I was only wrong twice when he was really close to what we call equal beat you know so there's it was a very strange case well the point being that he said that all of the other mediums where he was working and had voices coming they too felt these but that only felt them in their head Whereas I not only felt them in my head, but I felt them in my entire body, and I was capable of sensing two or more paths of waves at one time. So they might be flowing across through my legs and directly through my chest, hmm. you know, and through entire through the entire room. And so we did a quick experiment, you see, trying to de determine the environment. And I told him what shocked me was that this was the same feeling I have when I hold a seance and start building up for a trans mediumship and that I use my own body to adjust these frequencies mm -hmm. and I get them to a certain level where he was putting the knobs finally when I said it a little more right a little more left and we got everything tuned in and I said okay we're there we're where I normally have to work to get to and you're driving me okay? mm -hmm. so this surprised him a lot and then I described the necessity of using mathematics called a curl vector okay yeah. using your your cross product and that the uh, pickups had to be perpendicular to the flow of the ultrasonic waves and he said this is also an absolute requirement and, and impressed him that I had this information too okay so I could feel the waves I could tell the directions and I knew they had to be square waves and the measurements perpendicular this all fell into place enough that when I said finally I said okay Mr. Meek would like to make a small donation and he wants you to continue your work and he wants to work with you in getting this information reaching some goals and would you accept this offer of 16,000 maybe 12,000 Deutschmarks however this works out you can have half as soon as he has his first letter then in 90 days present your first report basically what you want to do and in 180 days and give us a final report on the direction and the sense of a, a growth and mm -hmm. at the 90th day of course supply another report okay he has written a letter and mailed it back saying I agree to what you've said he hasn't listed these itemized things he was of course afraid of a contract or sort of some kind of a binding situation I said no we're interested in reaching our goals I said what we're looking for is a document so that if anything happens everything continues as the transactions follow through mm -hmm. so he agreed to send you this letter which is written in German and of course it's written in German and uh, concerning the financial donations to the good Mr. Meek uh, I declare that I want to work with you with your financial gifts and the investigations and basically to work together mm -hmm. so therefore he's not making a commitment on paper here concerning the 90 day or the 100 no, day reports no, no, okay? no. or nor is he declaring the amounts involved just that he has made a 
My friendly greetings. Mm -hmm. Yours, Eric Koenig. Uh, okay. That's fine. And then I can, uh, <clears throat> uh, as I understand it, I can send him a letter spelling out just a little bit more specifically uh, what we uh, have in mind on the thing. Yeah. So, uh, still without actually presenting a, a hard and fast contract on it. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So he was uh, very glad, and he wanted to, as he expressed it, work with me. He says, I like working with Mr. Meek, and that's great, he said. But he was aware of the fact that I had information he had, and we'd gotten it from the same places. So that I am working with the lasers, and he's working with acoustics. He found a lot of parallels. He felt felt very comfortable with mm -hmm. me, yeah. and so I said yes. And since you well, write only in German, why don't you just go ahead yeah, and we'll write uh, to me, and we'll sure, respond. The work, will the work will have to be uh, between you and him. Uh, yes, that's yes, right. I'm just yes. a sure. intermediary setting up the yeah, not really the you're, you're the driver. I'm the medium <laughs> setting up setting up the uh, <laughs> setting up the uh, modus operandi. Uh, coming back to uh, the similarity of feeling that between experience there, over there with his energies and uh, your own work, uh, one phase of your mediumship uh, training, uh, <clears throat> do you see uh, any possibility that uh, the utilization of those energies uh, generated by his equipment would uh, either aid in the development of mediumship or uh, uh, would well, uh, b uh, be a supplement to mediums to uh, get... Uh, supplement, yes. Aid in development, I'm not certain. And the reason is um, we had Herr Sankowski, his wife, his son, Michael, uh, Karenig, and myself in this room. Karenig could barely feel the emanations I described. I was the only one that felt them strongly. No one else in the room felt them. Mm -hmm. Everyone heard the high-pitched whistle. So the awareness that's necessary to work as a medium or as a gift has to be there to start with. Uh, just a question about the uh, physical details of the visit. Did, uh, uh, did you drive up? Uh, yes, we did. Place? We drove up. Yeah, Herr and, and drove And his, his whole family, uh, Michael and his wife, went with you? Yes, they did. And they I witnessed see. the experiments and all the conversations. I see. Okay. How much time did you actually have in face-to-face -face contact with Kenny? Um, I arrived um, a little bit later than I wanted to be, perhaps around 11 o'clock, and I stayed at least until 6 or 7. Yeah. Okay. So you were with her just one day? That's yes, that's, that's right. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was with everybody only, or the other two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did uh, Sankowski have any... Uh, excuse us just a minute. Here we go. <coughs> did... Uh, uh, Sankowski, uh, volunteer any uh, further opinions with respect to Koenig's work? No, no, I did not hear anything come from him that wasn't anything that I hadn't brought up to him in I our see. discussions. Yeah. Yes, he was very excited about the information I brought concerning Heim's work and the cross product vectors, the square waves, the traveling waves, and the other characteristics I'd already found with uh, Will Thorner. And, of course, naturally, this was the crest of the wave of knowledge, and this became the topic of discussion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, the interesting thing was that the frequencies that Kernig was using, he said, um, required him to rather mess around, if that's a legitimate statement. He would hopefully get some psychic impression, whether to raise or lower the beat frequencies or the frequencies creating the beats. He said that the relationship that was the most critical, he found, for success was the golden section. The 1.6 number that was used during the Renaissance for the dimensions on the paintings. Yeah, well, how was that used in his uh, frequencies? He, he, takes, uh, he takes the two frequencies and goes for a ratio <laughs> that's the 1.6 and tries to drive a beat frequency. Or he'll, he'll set up a phase relationship so that that has some numerical value yeah. with respect to the beat frequency. Uh, Sankowski said that uh, Koenig was, uh, uh, on one of the experiments there, was uh, using 23, I think, and 32 yeah. uh, kilohertz. Uh, yes, yes. Is that about the range that he's working with? That's right. If you think about taking 23 and taking 0.6 times that, you get something on the order of about 14, and you add that to the 23, and you're going to get about a 37. 
That's you it. see, that's your golden mm -hmm. section there. Mm -hmm. And he was experimenting by dropping it down as low as 18 megahertz when we did our beat frequency yeah. experiments. Mm -hmm. But he still kept uh, that difference uh, between them, what you think, maybe? No, once I described to him the realization that I could feel those energies, that I knew where his guide helmet was, which was another thing I haven't mentioned. Helmet came to me the night before the experiments. <laughs> and he kept saying, Was danken Sie um Hel Helmut? <laughs> what do you mean, what do I think of Helmut? You mean Helmut Schmidt, the president? <laughs> it just went around and around in a circle, see. And so later, the next day, when we were at his house, I'm sitting there, and they start talking about Helmut, and no one had introduced me to this man as a spirit. So uh, this came kind of a surprise and a re support for me. And once I found him in the room, I was chasing him around. I'd find out where he was standing, I'd go there, he'd move in the other corner. But I was trying to feel the fields in the zones he was active. That probably was shook uh, Coney Young, didn't it? It did, it did. Yeah, in fact, that's when he broke out and relaxed, when I knew there was someone there where he was, because he knew where he was, too. So it turns out that uh, Coney himself is uh, mediumistic to But himself. he thinks I'm more clairsentient. Yeah. Good. Well, then, certainly, you've got a good working relationship uh, there. Oh, well, a couple of bear hugs when I left. Yeah. <laughs> but my German should improve a whole bunch before before I get a lot of smiles. <laughs> His wife's quite nice, isn't she? She's a good yes, person. yes, a very sensitive woman. Um, very, very interested in, in what he's yeah, doing. Yeah, totally yeah, supportive. Yeah. yeah, completely supportive. That's right. Okay, all right. <laughs> That's... Uh, Go on down now to uh, uh, the uh, uh, Sienkowski uh, discussions. Uh, I expect those were quite far-ranging. Uh, yes. Related to the, to uh, you told him frankly what you had found with Thorner. I understand. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, what I did instead of going by individuals, I went by that crest of wave of information, and I. I told him up front the uh, spirits discussed precession and a matrix describing the system that there was a uh, cross product rule involved that, that you had to have traveling waves and they had to be square waves instead of sinusoidal um, all of this information supported Heim's research without me having been introduced to Heim and it, and it really shocked him it really did uh, he couldn't get over that, and after the experiments at Koenig's place, he was certain that we're right. Um, after, uh, after the experiments at Koenig's, okay, he was certain that we were right, because he had never witnessed any phenomenon like being sensitive to those waves and the flow, the beats. So we discussed at length how to use the loop systems, the feedbacks. He played a lot of tapes and examples for me of, of, of results that he's, he's obtained either from Bowden or himself or yeah. other people. Um, he also discussed, of course, all of the various possibilities, and in my own brief opinion, uh, Mr. Sienkowski feels extremely submerged in the myriad of, of possibilities, and without any clairsentience or immediate feedback, um, he seems at quite a loss and relatively uncommittal. Um, but at the same time, he's excited about the fact that I brought forth information that supports Heim and that I can do something technical that's observable mm -hmm. with it. And since the information works right along with Will Thorner's work, we discussed the sensitive cell and anisotropic substances. But um, uh, the discussions varied from pretty much to discuss Heim's work. We really spent a lot of time because that was, hey, the introduction. I brought it, he had it, so we just went into mm -hmm. depth, and then he gave me, well, about six inches of notes here to go through involving that kind of work, especially because he has probes in which this energy was stored and other devices that show scientific tests that can be done to try and measure these impulses that are transmitted. The final stage of our work, however, was to take a look at McCray's Mark II. And I uh, was quite surprised he hasn't had the opportunity yet to even find a schematic or make one of what he has. He hasn't got any idea how McCray makes the thing whiz long, but I remarked to him that the, wa the waves I saw on the output of the device looked identical to the waves I've seen for the electric fish down in South America transmitting signals to each other in concerning their breed. Hmm. And he realized that this was correct and was quite surprised there, too. Um, 
So we had a lot of exciting discoveries, and all those I'm trying to get written down right now before I forget them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, by and large, he wanted to acquaint me with Heim, and I just reinforced that. We got Carl Kaiser there, and uh, the main, the main, a little loud, isn't she? The uh, discussion also came up about finding everyone a medium that they could rely on locally there. But because of the work that I'm capable of doing in Phoenix, I'm going to continue to work with each of these men independently and sending them the information I get back mm -hmm. without going through one or the other to supply them with information. Mm -hmm. But on the really difficult information or a very lengthy uh, German translations, I may end up sending something to Sienkowski if it's in physics because he wants to be able to yeah. explain it. Yeah. Now, the one issue that Mr. Sienkowski brought up for you was uh, this publication he's looking it forward to do in February. Okay. I didn't know any date. What okay. Uh, yeah. He had a letter from you that uh, arrived while I was over there. Yeah, right. And in this letter it says you should kind of look forward to trying to have something complete or publishable on February of the next year. Yeah, and I stressed that that was surely a, a, a first uh, iffy uh, That's right. thing. Uh, That's right. A first uh, draft yep. of a hypothesis. The time doesn't bother him. Yeah. And he's not at all concerned about publishing. He can handle any of it any way you want. Yeah. The only critical thing he says is that he does not want to discuss Heim's work regarding the precession that I brought or the precession that is involved in the atomic species and that it is used like in an article I sent about nuclear magnetic resonance. He feels that if we have any type of a barrier against someone using this material evilly, okay, that that would be it. He says he may discuss in very brief terms the Himes work concerning precession because no one can go out and investigate it. Yeah. Uh, I'm not quite clear. Uh, he's thinking about uh, going slow on on uh, uh, reporting on your work on precession because uh, he thinks that that would be. Uh, uh, well, opening uh, Pandora's box. Opening Pandora's box, yeah. Okay. okay. And I told him, of course, in our discussions about the M10, to not go and discuss this. But one of the issues I released for everyone's information over there uh, was the uphill transitions for photons from the infrared stage into the blue light because this affected uh, Kaga's work and then, of course, Senkowski's theories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it stands then on Senkowski... Uh, uh, he plans to continue to pull the uh, first draft of his thinking together. Yes. Yeah, okay, all right. Uh, he only wants some feedback. He wants a, a written statement from us how far we can go regarding precession. Yeah, well, that would have to come from you. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, but from the standpoint of a guideline, <clears throat> uh, I don't know enough about it to... Uh, uh, make an, uh, an intelligent, detailed uh, uh, statement, but I just have a have a feeling that uh, that uh, that is so uh, that may turn out to be so basic for the future that uh, we should go slow in spreading that out on the table at this time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree, and that's that's Sankowski's feeling. Just be very slow about releasing yeah. that. Discuss the material that's relatively well, obvious. I, uh, <laughs> was, uh, while I was uh, waiting uh, up here in the seat a little earlier today, I picked up a, a uh, Paris Herald <laughs> Tribune from last week, uh, an article on the U.S. physicist uh, proposed huge atom accelerator. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about a deal down in Texas, uh, 100 miles. Uh, you're familiar with this yeah. thing, right? Yeah. But I, I like this comment. Uh, we have, uh, this is uh, Leon Laterman, director of the Fermi Accelerator. Uh, we have reached a crisis in physics, Mr. Laterman said. 
where we are drowning in theoretical possibilities, not based on a single solitary fact. <laughs> <laughs> well, this came up in our discussions, you New see. New questions are being asked about what matter is, That's right. how it is formed, and why yep. it behaves as it does. Yep. Physicists do not understand why there are so many types of fundamental particles or why they vary so greatly. Some have virtually zero mass, while others have millions of, ti are millions of times more massive. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, I, I, all I can say is instinctively I feel that, that the work you're doing in that area is of uh, tremendous importance. Uh, not, uh, it goes way beyond what, what our immediate objectives are. Yes, it does. The only thing is that the precession of the uh, the material, rather than uh, the higher plane, does have an impact on the um, uh, acoustics that Koenig is doing and the kind of feelings and the vibes that uh, the mediums would mm -hmm. technically feel mm -hmm. that could be measurable, mm -hmm. even with an EEG. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. <coughs> well, what does uh, Senkowski want from me now as the next step, if anything? Or is he all set for Only, the letter uh, that I sent? He's, he's, yes, he's all, he's all prepared. He's only going to wait, and I'll send him that comment about precession then. Yeah, okay, all right. All right. <coughs> um, the, uh, the amount of the check I sent him was a shot in the dark. Did he make any comment about that? Uh, um, yes, I made some off offer to help pay for the gasoline and a few of the other items. And he says, no, he says, George has sent me you know, a very large check. Two thousand dollars, and he says, "I wouldn't, I wouldn't think of it, wouldn't hear of it." So okay. I took his family out for dinner last night yeah, and yeah, treated. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, on a strictly personal mm -hmm. note, uh, was there any statement about Regina? We had a lot of work with Regina because, in the first case, I, on the very first or second day, um, became in contact with her, the spirits, and the situations. And I told him what happened, right. and uh, this surprised him. And was she living at home then? No, she was in the hospital during these days. She came home on, uh, I think it was Friday, and I saw her a little bit on uh, Saturday, and then of course yeah. uh, some Saturday night when we went to dinner. But um, I'm going to be working with her. I made an offer in personal contact with her to exchange drawings and paintings. Good. Good. Okay? Good. Okay. Good. Good. This is the eldest daughter, eldest of uh, uh, Dr. Sienkowski's five children. Uh, she's had a rough time the last uh, few years. Uh, that's another story, but uh, do they think she's making any progress at the present time or not? Yes, and I told them that she's uh, really prepared to, with the help of someone that loves her, but not from the family, such as Bernhardt, to step out and grasp life with both hands. She's at the turning point right now where she needs to get some positive feedback, personal gain and effort, mm -hmm. and to feel this this return and take a hold of life. But she's scared to death, of course, of failure and other things, so she needs someone to help. Mm -hmm. But she's ready. Well, are they gonna be able to facilitate that uh, move for her to get her to do something so she's out on her own? I think they're going to um, work predominantly with uh, the advice of the doctors that are there in Germany. They said that the kind of signed a contract or, you know, whatever this involves for the commitment of a person, that until they clear her, you know, they're not to interfere. Um, okay, that's a, I'm glad to get that update. Uh, all right. Uh, then uh, let's move over to uh, <coughs> Manfred Kaga. And, uh, Manfred. Uh, first of all, how much actual time did you have in contact with uh, him okay. or in this place? I arrived at Manfred's earlier in the morning, perhaps uh, 10 o'clock or so, but I didn't leave until very late, 9 o'clock. So I had almost a good 10, 11 hours of direct physical contact. We spent, of course, probably two hours of that kibitzing and, and eating. Um, his first challenge was, who are you, why are you here, and how can you be here? And I discussed my abilities, my gifts, how I met you. And then we got discussing practical hardware, technical accomplishments. Not for our backgrounds, but for the exact work for Viticom, measurement of the auras, and everything else that you had on your list of five objects. 
and we decided that there was a possibility of perhaps three basic systems and one would include the filter multipliers like the starlight scopes that the military would use the other is a sophisticated color camera scanning system but the contribution i made to his work i'll wait yeah. Okay. The uh, the most specific contribution that I made to Herr Kager's work was he had a camera set up watching the TV when I arrived. It was off axis. It was not perpendicular to the screen. I told him how to align it, that he had to observe this curl vector property that we discussed earlier. When he did this, two new phenomena appeared on the screen. Do you recall the images described by people that they see when they go out of the body about the material flowing past them and the spirals? Mm -hmm. This appeared on the screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then in the second case, when we focused the lens properly, we got constructive and destructive interference patterns like you would get when you would use Schlerian optics. He had never seen that before. Okay. And we sat there discussing how we could improve just the camera system. And the spirits in the room came up with, why don't we stick in the Fabry-Perot interferometer? Well, this was exactly the kind of working environment Herkaga needs to be active. That got him fired up and excited. That was the first very positive contribution of the day. It was something mm -hmm. totally foreign to him. And he had some of these things. He's got, as you know, a lot of equipment. Yeah. <laughs> so he started tearing covers apart, trying to find everything. He found the cheap little one, but he couldn't find the big system he had. And he's holding all these parts, and so things broke down at that point. But he's excited now, and he wants to install this interference system because he realizes I'm right about the, uh, the properties involved. Okay, the point being that we are going to correspond in the first couple of weeks here and write out our observations and plans for these three basic systems. The third system uh, was also in incorporating the dicyanine filters that we discussed earlier, mm -hmm. and I'm going to supply him with dicyanine if I can get it, and the instructions for the methods for using it. And the reason is he cannot determine when he has something to, wor to work with. He isn't clairsentient or psychic. But he's dedicated. He's like uh, maybe perhaps Roger B Brower would be if he had the release and the opportunity, right? And um, however, you have to realize Kaga is now at his peak in his publicity. Um, he had just received a, a request to do IBM's new calendar, hmm. and they they told him it's worth forty thousand dollars if you can get it out in ten days. So right after I left, he feverishly began working on that. You see. So his comment to you is he accepts the $16,000 gift or 12000 however that falls. Um, but money isn't the problem. His problem is a qualified medium that can understand the material he's working with like it was when he and I were working together. Yeah. He wanted to know which room to work with. He asked me what the spirits were talking about. I said, well, they're saying, hey, now we can have some environment that's relatively stable that we can work in without it being disturbed. So we went around his castle searching the rooms, and I finally found a good room, and it just unfortunately happened to be the old prison cell down there. <laughs> okay. But it has, it has the quality of the rooms, the acoustics, the size, and everything. And I discussed this wave phenomenon with him that I felt at Carnegie's, and that's what we were trying to control. So he now has a room to work in. He's now aware of what I was being clairsentient to, and intends to begin assembling equipment, but he doesn't want to try the infinite number of permutations available. He wants some direct communications from someone. So I told him I'd be writing him. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a mere detail. How big is this room, roughly? What's, what dimensions of the room? About the size of your laboratory, the little one that we have the plasma experiments in. Yeah, it's just an ordinary 14 by... 15 or something like 12 or 14. Yeah, yeah. maybe even a little bit smaller, yeah. you know, 12 mm -hmm. by 12. Is it uh, down in the bottom? Is it a windowless room? Yes, you know where the Ausgang is for the church? Oh, excuse me. Yes. The, yeah. Okay, okay, this is the room that's on the corner of the of the castle yeah. that looks out upon that 
walkway to the church. It has, it has one window? It has uh, at least two little windows, yeah. but the walls are nearly three yeah. foot thick there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, relatively that, solid. Is that a chapel of jewel there? That's a chapel, all right. Uh. <laughs> That's a chapel. <laughs> I mean, I've seen chapels, but that was a chapel. <laughs> Inlaid gold and all of the paint and everything. I asked him, I said, do you uh, covet this or do you let the, the neighborhood drop in from time to time? And he says, no, he says, he he doesn't want to be the owner. He just lets the, the, the people, he holds a service once a week or something. Yeah. yeah. I think that's where, did he say that's where his daughter's going to be married next year? He didn't make that extremely yeah, clear. I, I, I think that, I think but I did I meet she, uh, I she told you the future that. husband. Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yes, I did. We all had dinner together down in the little village below. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, His daughter they, seemed like a very nice person. Yes, she might, kind of reminded me of Peggy. She was independent, but feminine, on the go, but she needed company. Very personable person. Yeah. 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 She apparently has a great deal of help to him technically in his work there. In the, uh, yes, in the, he showed me all of his laboratories so that I could, um, you know, work with him on this. And yes, he showed me hers. And he says, you know, she complained and complained because she had to work where I was working. And I finally put her her own lab together down over here and says so she never uses it because it's too far away when she wants to ask a question. <laughs> okay. uh, One last comment here about Kaga now in connection with Kernick. Both Kernick and Kaga are looking for a medium they can use and we discussed Frau Kaiser. Frau Kaiser is a very excitable woman. She's got all of the impressions of the, of the stereotype we call a woman's liver. And she has a quick tendency to aggravate men. They don't want to um, mold her, and they don't want to work with her to extract critical information. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have the technical background necessary to tell them what they need, but she can tell them the impression she's receiving. Um, we discussed... Frau Kaiser and I, the possibilities of her doing work. It did not become apparent she has any intentions of working with these two men, but these two men are looking for someone. I suggested to Kaga and Koenig we could arrange some kind of a test using the acoustic instruments for sorting out people in Bonzo land, if you understand the phrase, mm -hmm. from, the, from the legitimate mediums, and then begin some kind of work. Mm -hmm. Well, from my contacts in Germany the last uh, 10, 12 years, uh, uh, I've had the feeling that uh, good mediums were scarce. Very, very scarce over there. And over there it's even worse because Frau Kaiser tells me you have to be of her character to survive, that they're very strong. You have to, be on, have, to have a character like hers to survive as yeah. a medium. You, yeah. You're driven into submission. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mathematically, what do you think the odds are of her fitting the picture, uh, her willingness and her abilities? To work you with would, need, you would need an arbitrator there. Neither Senkowski, Kaga, and I'm not sure about Koenig, really would like to work with her. Mm -hmm. Put a third person in, and you can have a good system. Mm -hmm. They they get under each other's skins, and this leads to digression. Sankowski jokes about it, but a lot of good, valuable time was wasted in, in sidetracks. Too bad there's a far away uh, situation just reversed in Italy. There are some excellent, really excellent mediums down in Italy, but... <laughs> And Switzerland well, is a no man's land. Sienkowski just loves Tyrolia. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, that won't, that won't do. That's, that's Austria. Yeah, but it won't meet in the middle, huh? Mm. No. Uh, well, I don't know. That's, that's another all thing. Right, but, all right. But it's, uh, it's certainly obvious that uh, <clears throat> a good medium is called for at this stage. As we've seen. Uh, we got a perfect example of how uh, much uh, uh, Thorner's work is facilitated by your mediumship. Uh, 
Koenig's work is facilitated by your mediumship, and Kaga's work is facilitated by your mediumship. It, it fired everyone up and got everyone thinking there was hope. Yeah. <laughs> they asked you when you were coming back on your next trip. <laughs> they sure did. They all said, you coming back in Christmas? And I said, I'll try. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, Senkowski said, of course, why can't you come to Germany and live? And <laughs> remember me bringing this up. But I do have the uh, address for Frau Kaiser, and we're going to continue to write, and I'll evaluate this further, see yeah. if there's changes in growth. Okay, at this point, uh, we have uh, uh, covered the four basic areas that you went over to investigate. Is there anything that came up uh, any place along uh, the discussions uh, opening up uh, a new field or a new contact, a new subject, beyond, anything beyond the area of Kage, the area of uh, Senkowski's theoretical work, Manfred's ultrasonics, and Will Thorner's uh, work with uh, sensitive devices? Well, yes, a brief one. Sienkowski has his own assembly of equipment, and he has an attempt to do this uh, feedback with a, uh, the off offline uh, radio receiver. You, you understand that statement, right, where he has the uh, uh, receiver tuned just off yeah, the station, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we got some very, very strong work going. I had my guides up in that upper chamber in the lab, and I said, they're telling me to use the glass on your bookcases. He says, well, it's interesting you mention that because they've been telling me glass over and over when I get results. He says, I keep connecting the thing to glasses sitting on the table. <laughs> and I said, no, they're talking about the glass there. He says, well, fenster means window. I said, that's not a window. That's the glass of a bookcase. Oh, <laughs> okay. So we hooked up the glass to the microphone directly, and I said, you've got an acoustic resonant cavity here with just two glass plates facing each other. He's got bookcases yeah, on both yeah, walls opposite yeah, each yeah. other. And I said, now let's use our knowledge. We want to set up square waves. And so we use his ring modulator, which none of the other experimenters have had. I was going to ask you, okay. what is a ring modulator? He uses it, okay. I don't know. All right. If you wanted to fold over the bottom half of a sine wave so that it looked like Loch Ness Monster mm -hmm. in the water mm -hmm. going bump, 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 bump. That's what it does to an input. It just folds the bottom up onto the top. Can you do it on both uh, sine wave and square wave? If you, do it to, if you do it to square wave and if the duty cycle is 50%, you get a straight line like DC. You'd have to have less than 50% duty cycle to get pulses. And that is what McCray does. Okay? Oh. That's why I say there are many, many little things here adding up, see? All right, let's come back to McCray's uh, equipment. Uh, uh, will you tell me a little bit more about uh, your experiments uh, with that? Okay. My main concentration was to determine what kind of waveforms were being sent out and received. Because I had these predictions concerning the square waves, and the other issue that was new that no one else had really brought up was agreed to by Koenig, by Thorner, and Senkowski, and the, and the spirits. But no one was volunteering this information. I extracted it. So this is new information, and this is that it is frequency modulated. It isn't amplitude modulated. So the frequencies used in the systems are ascending or descending going wow, wow okay they're changing they're scanning like I'm attempting to modify this dialyzer okay um, we did not use any of these in our experiments that I know of we did get good results with the glass cavity and then we changed over to using McCray's device because spirits in the room told me we want to see how much of this information is what Senkowski and I became comfortable using it was a term called gestalt are you aware mm -hmm. of this word okay basically this mechanism that I was projecting with Thorner was a gestalt process 
going out instead of an incoming one. And they wanted to, in using a gestalt process themselves, interfere with it. And they were telling me that they were capable of modifying the words coming in this gibberish in the off, off uh, frequency of a radio station into words. And we got extremely clear voices that even I could understand the German for that were coming through, and some English ones, American, not British. You using uh... using the glass acoustic cavity and just his square wave generator. When we completed that experiment, the spirits said, we want to see how much of the energy is gestalt and how much of it is gestalt by the receiver. There was two gestalt processes. The spirits transmit a gestalt into noise, and it's formed into verbiage. Then the reader or the listener receives a gestalt impression from that and improves the quality of the verbiage. Sometimes the verbiage or the enunciations are clear enough, no one can mistake it, even people without gifts. But there are some cases where it is still gibberish enough that you could still say, hey, I think you're reading into this a little too much. So there's two gestalt processes, but it's unidirectional to the receiver. And their question posted was, how much of this is energy we can affect set up McCray's system and we'll see how much we can affect that. We tried it with just the plate. We got moderate results. So the spirit said, put an unused speaker on it. So I went to the closets, found one, and I set a um, 8 ohm oval speaker on top of this with the magnet against the capacitance with a sheet of paper between to keep from shorting out the runs, the, the etches. And you could hear when you walk up and tap just lightly the thump going through and affecting the entire resonance system so that it was acting as an acoustic pickup uh, as well as the other energy for the uh, capacitance we set up the system uh, with the, uh, the acoustic loop and we got changes which he has recorded. He recorded all the results of our experiments in his lab. Mm -hmm. And you could tell when they made the decision to go in and affect the system and bring it back. And I think they were doing a planned experiment to see just you know, how much they could project into it to get some real critical evaluation on this. Mm -hmm. Now he played for me some discussions with Bowden and another spirit over his telephone line sounded like a woman. I think yeah, you've heard I'm, it. I'm familiar with that, yeah. So the other new piece of information that regards McCray's work, Bowden's work, everyone's work, I said that it's the next thing is this near field property of a dipole. I said all oscillating charged bodies or bo bodies in motion have energy stored in a ring around them that's never radiated but can be changed in, in, in volume according to these vector properties and that I understood this energy coupling for that tape to be affecting that near field and I, sh and I, I said this is the kind of thing that you're talking about affecting on these edges so I discussed for him what sheet current was mm -hmm. the kind that would be on this pickup plat platter or, or sheet that McCray has mm -hmm. so I believe that we have what we call a near field coupling <laughs> so that's that, that pretty well summarizes any of the new things. That's the uh, the near field properties, and the uh, oh, and also I said to him that I predict that in Heim's work we'll find that momentum is conserved by shortening the radius, which changes the frequency, rather than um, changing the velocities. Uh, communication I had from uh, McCray the other day uh, was saying that he was. Uh, Delighted at the progress he's made in the last uh, couple of months. Uh, on uh, he's about three months ahead of schedule with his uh, his next mark. Uh, he he he's, uh, he thinks he's he's increased greatly in his understanding of what he wants to do and, and how to do it. Mm -hmm. I, no details at all. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. He's continuing to work on it. Right yeah, I'm I'm seeing in the system when we experimented with them being able to interfere with it. 
uh, a shift in the frequencies. You could see the standing waves and the traveling waves. And when we set up the acoustics in the room before, we also had a standing wave, and they would induce a traveling wave. So it appears to me his system is the same. He sets up a... Uh, he has a system that incorporates most of the advantages I've seen out of all of them, meaning to say that he has a major square wave that's not unlike Sinkowski's ring modulator. And, it, and, the, and in Kaga's work, he waves his hand between a TV screen and, and the camera. And the point is that you erase the stored mess and go start over. Okay, fresh, refresh is what the word would be in CMOS technology. And what I, what I was trying to get across to Sankowski, and I'm not sure I did, you have to have energy going in, and you've got to have a relaxation process and then you have a stored entropy, so you've got uh, a, 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 an orderly function. There are three functions, act, actualization, re refresh, but also cleanup. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, an aside uh, with respect to McCray. Uh, I continue to have an uncomfortable feeling uh, with what I can only refer to as uh, McCray's uh, commercial instinct. <laughs> uh, on the one hand, he has yeah. uh, uh, he has a grasp of this uh, type of activity having far-reaching implications for mankind, mankind's evolution. But uh, I keep seeing in the background uh, the idea that he wants to uh, capitalize uh, capitalize uh, yeah. on the thing, and uh, so uh, uh, I'm a little because I mention that because. Uh, well, I've given you carte blanche and uh, uh, exchange of information with Koenig, uh, Thorner, uh, Kaga, and Sienkowski. I don't have quite that same feeling with respect to McCray. To McCray or from McCray? Uh, because I'm asking, uh, can I give McCray information to Kaga and Koenig? I'm, I'm only speaking about uh, the flow of information. To McCray. Uh, to McRae from us. Yes. Yeah. I see that too. Because I'm, I'm really believing that uh, the refresh cycle, which is his longest frequency, the traveling wave interference frequencies are the same as Sienkowski sets up, Thorner sets up, and Koenig sets up. Kaga has them too. So therefore, we're talking about giving each other their works and showing them something where it's already working. Kerning is of the opinion, though, it's possible that the frequencies aren't as important as it is keeping this golden section, and that he changes his frequencies for some mysterious reason. Mm -hmm. I told him not to worry about it if we can't explain it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, there's some other things I can say about McCray, but I'll wait and, and okay. get into that in another, in another situation. Uh, by the way, Kagas gave me a XY stage to take into Phoenix to set up with my experiments with the laser. He just said, here, take this. I don't know what you mean by XY stage. Okay, it has uh, micrometer controls for two axes of motions and their tables, and it can handle heavy weights, so you can, you can move things in a macroscopic way, okay, mm -hmm. an X and a Y direction, but no vertical axis, mm -hmm. unless, of course, you freeze one of the three. Mm -hmm. This is a just a, a point that he's being very liberal and, and really trying to maintain a relationship. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, well, I think that pretty well covers the overall uh, picture, and uh, we'll leave it that uh, uh, while you've got <coughs> a whole suitcase full of notes there, You've got so many other things to do when you go back, getting started in school and whatnot, that uh, don't feel under any uh, pressure to uh, uh, write uh, uh, lengthy reports. If you want to, uh, I'll leave it up to you. You use your own judgment of what, what you do in the way of a very brief type summary on each of the, each of the ones, but uh, I really don't think it's necessary to go into great detail, and I will make a copy of the, I'll make a duplicate. Tape and send it okay. to you, and we'll have this. I only have one other question. A record.
do you want any copies of uh, Will Thoner's notes or the other one copy type notes that we have? No, I think you can, because all the flow of inf uh, is going to be between you and these other fellows, so that I think you should be the repository for all of these. Uh, okay, doke.